This is uh, the second part of the uh, video on the heart, and I want to um, show you a couple of things from some other hearts, uh, and then we'll progress in the flow of blood through the heart. So one of the things that I talked about was the right atrium in the first uh, video. This heart has been cut through the wall of the right atrium, and if we pull it back, it's been ripped here, but you can see that there is um, a depression right here about the size of a finger, uh, the end of your finger, and that is the fossa ovalis. It's sort of oval shaped, and it's a depression bet uh, between the uh, right atrium and the left atrium. It's in the interatrial septum. That was actually open when this individual was in the uterus and then it closes at birth and it seals off. So that's the fossil valves. There's one other thing I want to show you, or actually two things on this heart. This is a uh, sheep heart and um, I want to show you this structure that exists. This is the pulmonary trunk, this is the aorta, and this structure exists between the two. It's like a bridge between them. And this is the, it used to be the ductus arteriosus. It becomes a ligamentum arteriosum and the ligamentum arteriosum is a ligament between the pulmonary trunk and the aorta. Uh, in the fetal circulation, it's a bypass and it allows blood to go from the pulmonary trunk into the aorta. And then the last thing I'd like to show you on this heart, um, this heart's been cut so that you can see the shape of the ventricular uh, space. You see that the left ventricle sort of looks like a cylinder. It's sort of round in cross section. You see that the right ventricle looks like a crescent moon and it sort of wraps around the left ventricle. And the reason this happens is because the walls that surround the left ventricle are so thick and strong that the right ventricular wall, which is thinner, gets deformed and sort of uh, changes its shape to conform to the left ventricular wall. So you get sometimes sort of an inaccurate um, view. If you look at this this way, it looks like this left ventricle is really big and the right ventricle is really small but the left ventricle and the right ventricle have the same volume. As I said, they have to pump the same amount of blood. Okay, so that's kind of some interesting stuff that you might not see on all the hearts. We'll go back into this heart. We're gonna follow the blood now. It's left, it's gone from the right atrium into the right ventricle. And we have a couple of features in the right ventricle that I need to point out. I already pointed out the chordae tendinae and the papillary muscles. If we lift this, valve back, you can see that there are some tree roots back in here. And these are the trabeculi carni. And the trabeculi carni means meaty beams. They look a little bit like the pectinate muscles, except they're found in the ventricles. Okay, so the blood leaves the right ventricle. It goes out through the pulmonary trunk. Pulmonary trunk is an artery. You can see it right here. You can tell it's an artery because it has thick walls. Arteries have to uh, accommodate greater pressure than the ventricle uh, than the uh, veins do, and so they have to have thicker walls so that they don't blow up. And if we push this probe, and if you push probes through the heart, by the way, always use the blunt end so you don't make new holes. See, there's a hole going toward the left side. That's the left pulmonary artery, and then there's going to be one going toward the right side over this way, and that's going to be the right pulmonary artery. If I can find where it empties out here, I may or may not be able to do that. Nope, not on this heart. That's all right. I'll get in on another heart. Okay, blood's going to come back to the left atrium from the lungs, and when we roll this heart over to the dorsal side, and we can tell this is dorsal because we have this cranial caudal interventricular sulcus. We can see the bronchi, and you'll always be able to tell a tube is a bronchus because it'll have this kind of dark colored cartilage uh, in its walls, whereas the arteries, like this is the aorta, there's no cartilage in here. Okay. So the way to find the pulmonary veins, which empty into the left atrium, is to put your probe into the left atrium and push it back toward the dorsal side. And again, use the blunt end of the probe. Here we have an opening that's going into the left atrium. You can see it comes out into the left atrium. So that is a pulmonary vein. There are going to be four of them. You may or may not find all of those. Oh, while I'm here, here's another opening right here. Now we can tell this is not an artery, it's a vein because of the thin walls. Mm -hmm. This one goes into the right atrium, so this must be the caudal vena cava. And then over here, we find another thin walled opening right here. This also goes into the right atrium. This is the cranial vena cava. 
and you can see there's the right atrium, right ventricle, thin wall, and there's the probe coming out into the right atrium from the vena cava. Okay. So blood comes into the left atrium. Left atrium has the same structures that the right atrium did. It has pectinate muscles. You can see these kind of tree root structures.